Don't just live for tomorrow Or just live in yesterday Just be glad for all you have that's in today Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my blind reaction to My Hero Academia, Season 5, Episode 1. So yeah, we are finally here. Uh, we didn't have a new season debut last year. Uh, instead, just at the beginning of the year, we finished off Season 4. Um, but because of COVID and everything happening, we just weren't able to get to another new season last year. So they got the new season out for this year. Um, and hey, I I'm fine with that. That's as long as everyone was safe and everything went well, then that's okay. Uh, but yeah, so we have season five and I do not know what to expect going forward because with everything that happened last season, it's just, last season ended pretty nicely um, cause, cause after everything with, um, Overhaul and the League of Villains and everything happening in the first half of the season, the second half was basically just this festival and, uh, and, um, oh my god, what is his name? The Gentleman Villain, I can't think of his name right now. Um, okay, I remember his partner's name was Liberava. It was gentle, duh. I even said gentleman villain. It's like it was just it was gentle. So gentle and Labrava, um, and they weren't much of a threat. It's not that they were bad. Uh, they were great villains. Um, they were entertaining, and on top of that, they could put up a fight. But they were not as much of an active threat. Like they didn't even want to do anything super like terrible outside of just like infiltrating the school during the festival. That's literally it. Well, um, which would have been bad for a few reasons, but comparatively to like what Overhaul was doing and what the League of Villains have done and even Stain, it's not that big of a deal. And, and the season ended with that. And then we got a little bit of a, a little bit more with Overhaul, or not Overhaul, um, Endeavor and Hawks dealing with another no move. Um, a smart Nomu. Um, and Endeavor is continuing to show his desire to better himself as a person and as a hero. And yeah, it's really interesting. It was a really hard-fought battle in the end, but it was only a couple episodes there, so it wasn't like a massive uh, deal. <laughs> Um, but I, I feel like that's more of a big deal for Endeavor's character going forward. As for what else we're going to get for this season, I have no clue. I, I really don't know what we're going to go into. Um, maybe more stuff with the League of Villains. Maybe some other things here and there. I just, I don't know. But I'm excited. Uh, it's, it's been so long. Uh, it's been like a year since season four ended, something like that. And it's like, I, I've been wanting more. And we're finally getting to it. Uh, so, yeah, I'm excited. I can't wait to see what this season has in store for us. And I hope there's more awesome stuff with our favorite characters, more great stuff with the villains. I've had no real reasons to doubt the series so far. Um, it, it hasn't been perfect at all turns. There has been some weaker aspects, but it, it's never been outright bad. And so I'm hoping it continues that. But we'll see. We'll see. Um, there are a couple things I very vaguely know about coming in the future, but I have no idea when they're coming. And again, I only vaguely know about them. It's like I know the very basic uh, explanation of them. Um, so I don't know if that'll be this season or if that'll be beyond that. Um, I just, I don't know all the details beyond that, but we'll have to see. So we're just going to get this started, hope for the best, uh, with this first episode. Um, this will be obviously just 
reacting as each episode comes out each week. If there's a week off, then there's a week off. I mean, not really much we can do about that. But that's how it's going to be for this uh, this season and everything. Um, and hopefully we enjoy. Um, so, when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black and then fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. So, this was a good starting episode, just to get us back into things. I'm glad it wasn't, like, just another recap thing. Like, like last season's recap was good because it brought in the, the, the photographer, um, journalist guy, whose name I also can't remember. Also, Ari is the little girl I was trying to think of before, who was shown with uh, Mirio briefly in the opening. Um, but yeah, there was the photographer guy in, in the first episode of the last season, and I really liked him. I thought he was great. Uh, plus, I love his quirk. I wish I had that quirk. That would be an amazing quirk <laughs> as an amateur photographer myself. <laughs> um, but in all seriousness, so this one was definitely more of its own thing. It, it was our heroes doing a training drill. Um... It's just a training drill for Class 1A. They have to go to the mock city and, well, deal with the situation. There's a burning building, um, a victim floating, uh, washed away by the river, and a couple villains to take care of. Um, and, and right away, we see our heroes split up into different groups. We see them uh, have a... Uh, a team uh, set for putting out the fire, a team set for rescuing the victim being washed away, and even they have a recon team as well as a team uh, led by Pakugo set to take on the villains. And every team does exceptionally well, and I, I really want to maybe surprise you guys with what I'm about to say here, but... I can't deny it. And I hate that I can't deny it. But I can't deny it. Mineta did good. Really good. Like, there was one brief moment where it showed Mineta kind of losing his mind when uh, uh, Momo was creating something and she had, like, she was turned away and opening her outfit like she does in order to just allow it to come out and everything um but other than that he actually acted like a hero probably for the first time in this series and, and not only did he act like a hero he, even while he was working with sue and everything like he didn't once act like a perverted piece of shit <laughs> which is really wild he actually like did good and and what he actually did like the stuff he acted upon um like cause uh keeping the bridge from fully collapsing and everything like he did a good job and i cannot deny that um obviously sue did great um hioka and uh dupla arms i can never remember his actual name they did they did really well all of the teams did really phenomenal and I like how Bakugo and his team, it's like they just kind of went off on their own and decided to be, like, the team to hunt down the villains. Um, but Bakugo was completely right to think of that, because that would have to be something they would have to consider in this kind of situation. Um, and, again, in the end, he was also right to go so aggressively against the mock villains um, in order to stop them, because even though this is a training, just a training drill, and these are their upperclassmen, the big three, they still have to take it seriously. We saw Deku didn't take it seriously. He held back, not wanting to hurt Amajiki. And, and I get that. I get why he did that, but it's like, 
that Deku, you're a little too nice here. Even though, even if this is just a train show, you have to take it seriously. You have to go all out. You, you can't hold back like that. Because you never know what the situation will be, and you have to make sure you're prepared. So Bakugo was in the right, although the last attack he did was a little much, because at that point they had already won. But still. Um... And the part with Mirio jumping back in, uh, like, when the explosion shook the area. Like, obviously, he wasn't knocked back, and he purposely jumped back in. But that's something that they also have to account for, like I said in the reaction. It's like, they have to account that the victim could fall back in and could be washed away again. Especially with the explosion shaking the area like that. So they have to be prepared for that kind of thing. So, yeah, that was perfectly a valid... Uh, Thing to do for, for there um so yeah really really thought that was well handled um just from all of the young heroes as well as just everything that was going on in terms of the writing and whatnot um but obviously the big stuff came after so we see endeavor in his in his hospital bed recovering from just how fucked up he got during the fight with that nomu and he starts thinking back to the moments right after he had put his fist in the air as a symbol of hope and dobby approached them it didn't seem like he did anything he didn't, he, he didn't attack them or anything he just kind of approached them said hi and probably peaced out but that's interesting that he approached them at that point, too. Which means he was definitely watching and definitely the one behind the Nomu attack. So I'm kind of wondering, was he shown at the end of the last season? I don't remember if he was. I don't think he was. But we also see in the post credit scene here, Hawks goes to meet him. Which could mean a couple different things. One of which being either Hawks understood that when Dobby confronted them that he wanted to meet with him or something, like to tell him something, or I, I don't want to just jump to this conclusion, but what if Hawks was a bad guy pretending to be a good guy, like a double agent? I, I don't want to just assume that uh, it, it's the worst possible option. But at the same time, it's like, it's definitely a possibility here. I, I kind of do want to lean more into the idea that it, it was just kind of like, oh, he saw Dobby there, and it's like there's some kind of unspoken thing. It's like, oh, yeah, I have to go meet with him. I have to see what he clearly wants. I'm hoping it was kind of more of that thing. But I also don't think Dobby's necessarily betraying the League of Villains, so I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to see. Uh, the opening, the new opening was good. I, it, I, I didn't mind it at all. It's just wasn't one of my favorite openings necessarily, but I might have to see it more times to really get a good feel for it because that was only like a one-time viewing. So, But I, I, I very much did enjoy this episode. I, I thought it was a good episode to bring us back in. Wasn't too much, uh, just a training drill. And it wasn't, at the same time, just recap, either. There was a little bit of recap to the Endeavor stuff, but that's about it. Um, but I really like how they handled it, and I thought it was entertaining, and I'm glad to be back. It was, again, it was a good way to just reintroduce us to all of these characters and just kind of, like, get us back into the swing of things, back into the the enjoyment and everything. And, and I, I think that this... First half of the season, at least, this first arc is going to be a lot calmer based on the opening. It, it doesn't look like it's going to be as focused on the villains, maybe, but rather more on the classes. Classes 1A and 2A. Um, I, I definitely think it's going to be more about them based on the opening. Shinso definitely seems to be important, specifically. So... 
I'm good with that. And, and I'd definitely love to see more of what they, what the class one or two A or one B or whatever it is, what they have in store. <laughs> um, because there's so many interesting characters in that class, and I just want to see more of what they can do. There's some characters we haven't even seen anything from them yet. Um, we've seen a few of them for sure. Like obviously, we've seen uh, Tetsu Tetsu, and um, I cannot think of her name right now. But the girl who uh, who uh, took the um, not training. Oh my god, internship. Yeah, I think the I think it's it was the internship with uh, Momo. Kendo, that's her name, Kendo. Um, and then there was uh, the one guy as well who could use other people's powers. Um, his name begins with an M. Monoma, Monoma, that's it. Uh, see, I'm 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 starting to remember. <laughs> um. Obviously, Pony Sunatori, who, whose name I very much remember just because she's adorable. <laughs> also, admittedly, because uh, at Yomacon, I think in 2018, I want to say, um, I met up with a cosplayer uh, who did uh, a great Pony cosplay. And it's like, she was like, I, I used, she was prominent in my uh, cosplay music video for that Yomacon, so... It's just, it's just, it, it, it clicks in my mind a little easier. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited to see what else we have in store for this season. Nonetheless, even if this first half does end up being a lot more calm, a lot more just focused on the characters, I'm, I'm all good with that because I love building on these characters. Um, it, it's one of my favorite aspects of the show by far. So... Tell me in the comments below what you thought of this first episode of My Hero Academia Season 5, and thank you so much for tuning in. For now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.